Hello students, welcome to AIMS India online classes. This is a chemistry session. Here we are discussing about water. In this session, we are going to say about the purification of water. Water might be polluted in different manners. Then how to purify that water we are going to say here. Water is called universal solvent. It practically dissolves anything and everything in it. It is another matter that certain substances dissolve it completely and very fast and some other substances they dissolve very slowly and they may take years and centuries of time also for dissolving. So that depends upon the nature of the substance but many substances they dissolve into water. Because of this reason water is called universal solvent. If it is exposed to air, it dissolves a little of oxygen and carbon dioxide gases into it. It dissolves very small amount of containers also in which it is kept. So it dissolves many things into it. Almost all the substances they dissolve into water. But some substances they dissolve very fastly and to a large extent. And some other substances they dissolve very slowly which may take years and decades and they may dissolve very small quantity. So this water if it is kept in the open then that water dissolves certain gases also into it like uh, oxygen, nitrogen to a little extent and this water can dissolve carbon dioxide gas to a large extent and even this water can dissolve very small amounts of the containers in which it is kept also. Thus to prepare perfectly pure water, it is not possible. Actually to say it is impossible, but very difficult. However, <coughs> it's not impossible, but it is difficult. However, for all practical purposes, water free from dissolved impurities and pure enough for accurate chemical work can be obtained by distillation process. So the preparation of pure water or the purest form of water which is used in medical purposes and in industrial works that is called distilled water. The purest form of water can be prepared by distillation process. So methods of purification let us see here how water is made pure. Treatment of wastewater involves physical, chemical and biological processes which remove chemical and biological matter that contaminates water. So if these all material matters are removed from the water then water becomes pure enough. So this uh, removal of these uh, biological and chemical materials can be done by different processes like physical methods, chemical methods and even biological processes are also used in the purification of water. One of them is uh, Wastewater, first of all, it is passed through bar screens. So in the treatment of water pure water or in the methods of purification of water, first of all, that wastewater is collected is passed through bar screens. Then what happens? Large objects like uh, rags, sticks, cans and plastic packets, etc. These all are removed by these plaster rags. See here, they, this is the screens. So all will be trapped here pure water will go other side. So first of all, waste water is passed through bar screens here. So that these all big objects will be trapped in this. Next, water then goes into a grit and sand removal tank. This is speed of, the speed of incoming waste water is decreased to allow sand, grit and pebbles to settle down. So after the removal of those big objects, water is allowed to come into these uh, tanks where grit and sand are removed. So here the speed of the water is uh, slowed down to allow these uh, sand, grit, pebbles all settled down so that they can be removed from the water. Then the water is then allowed to settle in a large tank which is sloped towards the middle. So after the removal of the sand and pebbles, water is allowed to come into a tank, big tank, which is having 
slope surface bottom surface towards the middle now solids like faces settle at the bottom and are removed with the scraper so that the solids will be removed from this this is the sludge a skimmer removes the floatable solids like oil grease so certain uh, impurities like oil grease these all will be floating on the water so these floating object materials are the uh, solids will be removed by using a skimmer so that by removal of these all impurities water soak formed clear water so formed is called clarified water okay in this clarified water almost all the bigger impurities are removed solid waste and uh, floating waste these all are removed then the water obtained is called clarified water the sludge is transferred to a separate tank where it is decomposed by anaerobic bacteria the biogas produced in this process can be used as fuel or can be used to produce electricity so what is happening the sludge is transferred into a separate tank so the sludge is separated from the water so from the clarified water the sludge is separately it is sent into different separate tankers where it is decomposed by anaerobic bacteria then it produces a gas which we call as biogas so the biogas so produced in this process can be used for as a fuel or can be used to produce electricity also and next air is pumped into the clarified water to help anaerobic bacteria to grow properly so this bacteria consumes human waste food waste soaps and other unwanted matter still remaining in clarified water so actually in the clarified water these all are removed if there is still these all wastes like uh, food waste human waste and soaps these all there are so this anaerobic bacteria will remove these all it will consume those all and so that the water will be purified after several several hours the suspended microbes settle at the bottom of the tank as activated sludge the water is then removed from the top so these all waste materials will be settled at the bottom as activated sludge so the pure water from the top it will be removed the activated sludge is about 97% water remaining are impurities the water is removed by sand drying beds or machines dried sludge is used as manure retaining organic matter and nutrients to the soils so what happened so this activated sludge is uh, containing around 97% water the water is removed by the sand drying beds or machines also they use for separation of this uh, water then the sludge which is separated there will be dried and used as manure which returns the organic matter and nutrients to the soil the treated water has a very low level of organic material and suspended matter it is discharged into sea a river or into a into the ground also to increase the ground water level nature cleans it further sometimes it may be necessary to disinfect water with chemicals like chlorine and ozone before releasing it to the distribution system that is uh, rivers or ground water or for domestic purposes before distributing to these uh, uh, terminals this water will be treated with uh, certain chemicals like chlorine and ozone to kill the uh, bacteria and inf infections in present in that to disinfect it to kill the germs and bacteria present in the water still they use chlorine gas or ozone gas that will pump it into this water so that water will be purified from this all bacteria and germs it will be disinfected then only it will pass it into different purposes so this water is now supplied to various places such as homes factories industries by through the pipelines at homes 
you often treat water before using it for drinking on various methods by using the various methods adopted in homes for making water fit for drinking isn't it you also might have observed this often in our homes water will be boiled before drinking it so this is also one of the purification method what happens by boiling the water the germs and the bacteria present in the water will be killed by boiling it so that is one method for purification of water at homes and even the water will be filtered by using different sieves and filters that is also one of the purification technique for water so in this way various methods are adapted in our homes for making water fit for drinking now let us see about natural water and the treated water natural water means the water which occurs in the nature in free state it is called natural water and one more kind of water we can say examples for this natural water as river water well water rain water spring water etc these all are the water different forms of water which are ex existing in the nature naturally so these all are called natural water and one more kind is a uh, treated water so the natural water that obtained from the different sources will be treated by some man made processes and which can be used for some purposes is called treated water so water before using it in different purposes will be treated with certain processes to remove the unwanted materials present in the water so so does the formed water by the treatment is called treated water okay naturally existing water is called natural water the from the natural bodies the collected water will be undergone certain treatments certain purification methods for usage in the different purposes that water is called treated water this treated water is of uh, two types one it is a uh, distilled water another one is potable water okay what are these two let us see here first let us go through distilled water water obtained by distillation of natural water such that contains no dissolved salts or gases or any other impurities is called distilled water so you can say distilled water is the purest form of water already we have come to know as purest natural existing water is rain water because there also before raining distillation process has been done by the nature first water evaporates from the water bodies and it condenses and occurs rain there by this pure water is obtained from the rain also but in its journey to the earth again it dissolves impurities and some other gases also into it that is another thing so rain water is natural activity in pure water and next distilled water is the purest form of water but it is man made it is purified by the man what we do in the distillation process first the impure sample of water is taken into a container it is heated strongly by heating water evaporates and will with these vapors of water are collected into another container and they are cooled then it condenses to form pure water in that way the pure water obtained in that process uh, which is containing two continuous process uh, evaporation and condensation is called distilled water so this distilled water is the purest form of water which do not contain any salts or gases or any other impurities it contains only water that is called distilled water the distilled water is purest form of water we can say it is used for preparing soluble injectables as well as qualitative analysis in the laboratories often it needs to take only pure water without any other chemicals dissolved in it in those cases they use this distilled water even in the medical purpose also for making soluble injectables for dissolving certain chemicals to inject they use this distilled water because it does not contain any other chemicals dissolved in it okay that is distilled water next uh, potable water it is another uh, treated water 
the water suitable for drinking is called potable water remember potable water is different from distilled water even though the purest form of water is distilled water it is not suitable for consumption because that purest form that is distilled water does not contain any dissolved gases or salts in it but the water which is suitable for drinking should contain certain amount of salts dissolved in it and even certain gases dissolved in it that gas so that water is only suitable for drinking generally the water uh, which contains around 2 grams of salts dissolved in it per liter like sodium chloride that is uh, used for useful for consumption that water only is called potable water there is a huge amount of natural water on the surface of earth but the amount of water which can be used for human consumption and other animals is very small isn't it around 3/4 of the earth surface is covered by water we have studied but a large amount of water in that is in the salt water form in the oceans and rivers only very very small quantity of water small percentage of water is available which is a fit for consumption of uh, human and animals 97.4 percent of the total water available on the earth surface is in the form of oceans and uh, seas which is not fit for drinking and for other usage it is salty and hence unfit for human consumption or even for agricultural purpose also it is not useful rest of the water is uh, frozen in glaciers and polar ice caps hence it is not available for human consumption out of this 3% also almost uh, 2% to more than 2% is in present in the frozen glaciers and uh, polar ice caps so it is not also available for, for available for human consumption only 0.01% of the fresh water is available which is fit for human usage and even for animals also see how very rare quantity of water is available for consumption and for our other purposes most of the water in the form of oceans and rivers seas which is unfit for usage so very 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 small quantity of water is uh, in fresh water form which is uh, fit for human use and animals so it is very rare quantity we have to use wisely this water should not waste this water okay now let us see what are the qualities for a being for water to be potable we told the water which is fit for drinking is called potable water so what what are the qualities for this uh, potable water let us see those here distilled water is pure water at it is not suitable for drinking purpose because it has a flat insipid taste not only that it does not contain any required salts dissolved in it required <coughs> salts and gases are not dissolved in the distilled water that is why we say even though distilled water is purest form of water it is unfit for drinking so now let us see the qualities of water which make it potable one it is uh, it must be clear and or colorless okay it should be colorless and clear it must be odorless also if it is getting odor means we can understand it might be dissolved some impurities in it it must be free from harmful bacteria and suspended impurities so it should not contain any such kind of impurities in it and even it must must contain dissolved gases like oxygen and carbon dioxide as they communicate freshness to the water and give sparkling appearance to the water so there should be small quantities of oxygen and carbon dioxide gas dissolved in the water by the presence of these gases only water gets that sparkliness and even water will be fresh enough and even it should contain small quantities of salts dissolved in it as we told for every 1 liter of water there should be around 2 grams of common salt dissolved in it 
so then only it is said to be potable water that is about potable water okay thank you for watching our video please subscribe our youtube channel aims today and visit our website aims today.in for latest updates on recorded videos